Hello, and thanks for watching the recorded Pear Deck webinar. This webinar focuses on how you can engage every student in every class, as well as encourage deeper thinking and a better understanding of the content you are teaching with Pear Deck. In this webinar, we'll cover three main topics, the benefits of active learning, examples to show you how Pear Deck works, and a tutorial on how to create and present your own Pear Deck lesson. Pear Deck is perfect for bringing active learning into your classroom, no matter what subject or grade level you teach. Active learning has a significant impact on your students and on achievement gaps. Students tend to do better on tests and retain more information when we use active learning techniques as opposed to a traditional lecture. And when we're trying to create an equitable learning environment that gives each student a fair chance at success and a voice in your class, active learning is essential. Pear Deck allows teachers to make any presentation interactive, so every single student can actively participate right from their own device, even the shy students who wouldn't normally raise their hands. Pear Deck displays answers anonymously on the projector view by default, so students don't need to worry about being called out for their answer. And when you let each student answer on their own device, then share those answers anonymously on the projector view, suddenly each student's idea matters, and everyone has the opportunity to learn from each other. Let's look at some quick examples of the ways that you could use Pear Deck in your classroom. At the beginning of class, you can ask broad, open-ended questions with Pear Deck to get students thinking on their own and pulling in prior knowledge. Here's a pre-made slide template that you can add to your own lesson with Pear Deck. Because it is a text response slide, as you can see on the Pear Deck bar at the bottom, students can type responses onto their own screens. At the bottom of my projector view, I can hover over the navigation bar and see in real time how many students have responded. When I want to share these responses on my projector, I can just click on the projector button. Whether you share answers or keep them private to you, all responses you collect in Pear Deck are saved automatically in your Pear Deck Home Sessions menu. In the middle of your lesson, you can get students engaged in your material by encouraging them to estimate, think critically, discuss, and apply their knowledge with Pear Deck interactive questions. Each time you prompt students, you're also doing a formative assessment and gathering instant insight into how well they're getting it. This is a Pear Deck draggable slide, as you can see by the bar at the bottom of the slide. Students are moving the draggables on their own screens. You can imagine how easy it is to get a picture of what everyone is thinking, even if this were a class of 30 students or many more. On a number response slide, Pear Deck automatically displays the guesses as a box and whisker plot. This is a great way to see a pattern in the answers, the median number, and the range the majority of the answers fall into. You can help build number sense and metacognitive thinking skills by asking students, for example, how come no one guessed 1,000? Or how did you make your guess? You can also show the individual responses if that's better for your discussion. Just go to the top left corner of the screen and change it to the grid layout. Here's a way to use the drawing slide on a graphic question. Students can use the straight line tool. As the teacher, you can change the layout in the top left corner of the screen to see all responses at once. Then you can use the overlay button to show all the drawings on the same background image and see how they line up. By the way, this is a graphing template in Pear Deck. You can add it to any presentation in Google Slides or PowerPoint online by browsing the pre-made slide templates. Then add the template by clicking on it and you can change the prompt or the axes to match your own content. It's also fun to have students explain a concept with a drawing slide. In this example, we let students draw a vocabulary term to help them deepen their understanding of it. When you display their work, you can scroll through all of the responses on the projector so that every student benefits from seeing how their peers think of the same concept. When you create a website slide, you can embed a website and let students interact with it right within the slide. In this case, I have embedded a FET simulation and added a prompt to the main body of the slide. 
Let me show you how this looks in the student view. As you can see, any student who has joined the session can interact directly with the simulation on their own screen. This type of activity is especially smooth in a student paced lesson. For example, on the projector view, I can turn on student paced mode. Now I'm going to toggle back to my student view and show you what this looks like for a student who's logged into my session. Students have simple navigation controls that they can use to scroll through all the slides on their own. All of the responses they leave are automatically saved in your sessions menu, just like in a teacher-led session. When you want to turn off student paste mode, simply go back to the navigation bar on your projector view. The student slides will sync up with yours. If you're ready to transform your own slide presentations, watch the next segment and you'll see how to build and present a Pear Deck lesson. To begin, go to PearDeck.com and click on Teacher Login. You need either a Microsoft Office 365 account or a Google account to log in and make presentations. The first time you sign in, you'll be prompted to set up your Pear Deck account. Once your Pear Deck account is set up, you can go to your Pear Deck home anytime to create and edit presentations. Click Create a Presentation to go directly to Google Slides or PowerPoint Online if you're using a Microsoft Office 365 login. The first time, Make sure to install the Pear Deck add-in. Click on Insert, then Add-ins, and go to the store. Search for Pear Deck, then click Add. Going forward, each time you want to open Pear Deck, just click on the Home tab, and click on Pear Deck to open the sidebar. If you logged into Pear Deck with Google, you'll be taken to Google Slides to edit presentations. The first time, you can get the add-on by clicking Add-ons and Get Add-ons. Find Pear Deck and click to install it in your drive. Thereafter, every time you want to work with Pear Deck, just go to your Add-ons tab, click Pear Deck for Google Slides add-on, and open it to open the sidebar. You can also go directly to Google Slides or to PowerPoint Online whenever you want to create a presentation. All presentations you make with Pear Deck are saved automatically in your Google Drive or your OneDrive. You can also search for them on your Pear Deck Home under Present a File from Drive or OneDrive. You can transform an existing lesson by adding a quick pre-made formative assessment or reflection slide from the template library, or you can build a custom interactive slide from the Ask Students a Question section. Let's start with a slide template. First, find the category you want. Then click on the slide you want. Feel free to customize any of these templates in the editor. You can edit the font or text or images or any aspect of the slide. It's really important to know that this slide will only be interactive if the Pear Deck bar is affixed to the bottom of it. To make a custom interactive slide, first create your slide with the editing tools and add your prompt, question, or content. Then go back to your sidebar and down to the Ask Students a Question section. Click on the type of question you want to ask. You'll notice that while all of the slide templates and many of the custom slides are available with the free plan, the custom drawing and draggable slides are, in fact, premium features. So let's say I want to make this a draggable slide.
Depending on the slide type, you'll be prompted to customize response options for your students in a pop-up menu like this one. With this bar at the bottom of the slide, I know it will be interactive with Pear Deck when I start presenting. If I remove the Pear Deck bar, this slide will still be included in my presentation, but the slide won't be interactive. To change the draggables, go back and click on the same button again. You'll see the update in the Pear Deck bar. You can also change the question type entirely by clicking on a different response option. You can transition items onto your slides or share an interesting video or GIF with your students in a few different ways. In order to activate slide animations or transitions, GIFs and videos and control them on the projector view of your presentation, first install the free PowerUp Chrome extension. This extension works in the Chrome browser in Google Slides only. You can quickly install it in the Chrome Web Store, or you can click on the link in the Pear Deck PowerUp Knowledge Base article. Installing the PowerUp extension is optional, and you only need it if you want to activate the animations and videos on your slides. To demonstrate this, I'm going to add a GIF and a video directly to some slides so I can play them on the projector view when I present. You can insert both GIFs and videos from your computer, drive, or the web by clicking on the Insert button in the Google Slides menu. So I'll start out by searching the web and previewing this GIF. I'll insert it. If I want to add a video, I can go back to the insert menu and click on video to search for something from YouTube. Or if you have a link you want to use, go ahead and copy it. Go back to insert, video, and URL. If the preview works, you know it's going to work on the slide. Now, I can also make this slide interactive with the Pear Deck add-on. If you have installed the PowerUp extension, you'll be able to access it directly from the menu or click add-on. I'll make it a text response slide so that students can respond by typing on their own screens. Again, the extension has been installed on my browser. So I'm going to present now. As you can see, when I present this Pear Deck session, I can control the video that I added to the projector view of the slide. When the slides are interactive, students will be able to respond on their own view. This is such a helpful way to let students take notes and get their feedback in real time. And by putting the video on the projector, students only see an image of it on their screens. If you want students to interact with a video or another website on their own student view, make a website slide. We especially recommend this method when you plan to use student paste mode. The power up is not required for this feature. First, open the Pear Deck add-on. And click on the website option. Many website URLs can be inserted here directly. However, to insert a YouTube video, you will need to use the embed URL. You can get that by opening the video, clicking share, clicking Embed, then copy the URL between the frame references and quotation marks like this. 
copy this URL and paste it into the web field of the preview window. As long as you can see the preview of the video here, you know it will work. With this video embedded, I'll go ahead and present. Students can play this video when I reach the slide. Or if you turn on student paste mode, students can navigate to this slide on their own screen and play the video. In the next section, we'll look at how to run a presentation session. Before you present, click on the menu button in the sidebar and determine whether you want students to log in with an email account or anonymously. If you choose the anonymous login, students will get an avatar and a nickname and you won't see their real names at all. You can also update this setting in your Pear Deck Home settings menu. Just remember that whatever setting you choose will apply to all further lessons until you change it. When you're ready, make sure to click the Present Lesson button in the Pear Deck sidebar. There is no limit to the number of sessions you can present with Pear Deck. Each time you present, you automatically open the projector view and you see the join instructions for your students to enter your session. Students go to joinpd.com and enter the five letter join code from the projector view. In this case, the code is AOZTP. On the other hand, you can copy the session link where it says give students a link. Students can click on this link to enter the session directly and this link to your session never expires. As long as your session is active, students can join. Now that the presentation has started, I'm joining this session as a student in a new window. First, I go to joinpd.com, then enter the join code from the projector view. If you require email login, Students will also need to log into or be logged into a Google or Microsoft Office 365 account in order to join your session, depending on your settings. When you require email login, you get to see exactly who joins your session and who leaves each response. If you activated Classroom Climate before your session, students can tell you about their mood on the first slide. You can activate Classroom Climate in your Pear Deck Home settings menu. Just go to Pear Deck Home and My Account, then click on Settings. Like all other settings, this will apply to all further sessions until you change it. Now I'm back in the role of presenter and I'm showing you the projector view. In a real classroom setting, I would be showing this view on a projector screen in front of the class. On this view, I can hover over the bottom of the slide to open the navigation bar. With the navigation controls on the left, I can progress through the slides, and I can also use the slide navigator to jump ahead. The student's screens sync up automatically. In the middle of the navigation bar, you see the number of responses you've collected in real time. When you're ready to show responses, click on the projector or show responses button. The default display on a drawing slide is a list layout, so you can scroll through each response one at a time. But if you want to see an aggregate view, go to the top left corner of the screen and choose another layout like the grid layout. 
to see thumbnails of the responses, or choose the overlaid layout to see all of the responses on the same background image. You can also use the lock button to stop students from being able to respond. That's right next to the projector button. The student's screens will be locked. You can also set a lock slide timer by clicking and holding down on the lock button. When you ask a new question, you can add a preset question to your presentation on the fly. Pear Deck offers various pricing plans, including free, individual premium, and custom premium plans for schools and districts. In the following section, we'll explore two of the most exciting premium features. First, the teacher dashboard, where you can see students' names in the session during class and hide or highlight responses on the projector view. After that, takeaways, which are Google Docs that Google users can publish for their students at the end of the session. On your navigation bar, you can also click the More Actions menu, or open the private teacher dashboard view in a new device or in a new window. You can also open the dashboard from your Pear Deck home in the Sessions menu. Just find your session and click on the dashboard icon. The dashboard is a very powerful feature that allows you to see which student left each response. This is super helpful for getting more insight into how each student is doing during class, and you can review their answers after class. The dashboard view syncs up to the projector view and allows you to control which responses show up on the projector, so you can highlight responses, and going back to the projector, only the highlighted responses show. With the dashboard, you can also hide responses by clicking on the More Actions menu right by the student's name. All responses are automatically saved in Pear Deck, and there's no way to delete them. But you can certainly hide any inappropriate or distracting responses from the projector view using the dashboard. In the dashboard, you can also see the roster of students who've joined your session. And if you need to, you can block a student from a session using the More Actions button next to their name. On a draggable slide, if you want students to focus on one pin only, or one draggable only, choose the overlay layout. Then choose the draggable that you want students to see on the projector view. Toggling back to my projector view, we can see the update on the slide. With Pear Deck Premium, you can publish student takeaways at the end of the session. First, end the session. Then publish takeaways. you will get a special link to the docs in Google Drive. You can do this in your sessions menu too. Takeaways will need to be activated in your Pear Deck Home settings menu. Takeaways are personal, editable Google Docs that are created for each student in the session. They include all the slides as well as the student's answer for each question. You own the takeaways that you publish and students have access to their own copy only. They're perfect for giving feedback to students after class or extending the lesson by assigning the takeaway as homework. Many teachers ask students to look at their own takeaway and reflect on what they've learned from the lesson, what they learned from their peers, and what still confuses them. There are already places provided in the doc for this kind of reflection. Click the share button to share a takeaway to another teacher, a counselor, or a parent. When you publish takeaways, they are automatically saved in the Pear Deck takeaways folder in your Google Drive. They are stored based on the name of the deck, then on the name of the session. Each time you publish takeaways, 
a blank responses copy is created and you can share it in Drive to a student who missed class. For students, takeaways go directly to the Share With Me section. When you finish presenting, you can end the session and publish responses. You don't have to end the session until you're ready, and you can keep any Pear Deck session running as long as you like. You can simply close the browser and return later. When you do want to end the session so that students can no longer be logged in, you can end it from the navigation bar on the projector view, or you can end it in your Pear Deck Home Sessions menu. If you turned on Classroom Climate with Feedback in your Pear Deck Home Settings menu, students will be prompted to give you feedback on their view. Another way to publish responses at the end of a session is to export to a spreadsheet. I'm publishing from my Sessions menu. Like Takeaways, spreadsheets are automatically saved for you in your Pear Deck folder in Google Drive. Spreadsheet exports can be graded very easily, whether you do it manually with a Google Sheets add-on or by importing the data into another program. The sheet displays multiple choice, number, and text responses, as well as the students' names. To learn more about Pear Deck, check out PearDeck.com for more information, help videos, and the knowledge base for help articles. Thanks so much for joining us on our mission toward active learning, engagement for every student, and a future of more inspired, creative, and critical thinkers.